I'm joined now by Kareem Sajapour, a senior fellow focusing on Iran at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Can you give us some context around this prison fire? What is the significance and what have you learned about what has happened so far? Well, Evin Prison is prime real estate in North Tehran, and it was initially a prison that was built for 300 people, and it's now around 20,000 prisoners. So mm -hmm. it's quite sprawling. Um, among the political prisoners in Evin Prison are U.S. citizens, including one of my close friends of 20 years, Siam Namazi. And I call, actually used to live across from that prison in Tehran, and I called a friend and I asked them to go out on their balcony. And you could hear loud chants of death to the dictator, death to Ayatollah Khamenei, cars honking their horns, a lot of mayhem. The families of the political prisoners were totally terrified. And initially, state television reported that 40 people died as a result of smoke inhalation. They later changed that to four. I suspect it's going to be some time before we really find out what happened inside that prison that night. Well, you, you take me to my next question, because do you trust any of the information that is coming out right now about this? How, how do you expect we will find out exactly what happened here and what the death toll actually is? We can't trust official state media to tell us the truth about what happened. Um, but within the prison, information does tend to leak out. So we may not know by tomorrow or next week, but I suspect that eventually we will have a better picture of what exactly transpired. Mm. Well, and as I reported at the top of this segment, yesterday marked one month since Masha Amini's death. What does it tell you that the demonstrations are still continuing um, several weeks in, despite the crackdowns, they are ongoing, and the people who are protesting seem undeterred, quite frankly. Does this feel different from past moments of protest? It does feel different. I mean, among the, other, among the things this tells us is that there is perhaps no country in the world with a greater gap between the regime and society than Iran. You have a regime which in many ways resembles North Korea, and you have a society which aspires to be like South Korea. It's a regime uh, led by geriatric reactionary old men. It's a society of young modern people. And so we've known for a long time that young Iranians want a fundamentally different system. Um, in the past, their attempts uh, at reform and change have been crushed by the regime. This time around, it appears the protests do have legs because mm. it's among uh, a wide array of uh, socioeconomic groups um, throughout Iran, not just in urban areas. You know, I, I wonder what you make of the U.S. response, because President Biden has been asked about this. Uh, he has indicated they're taking it very seriously. They're monitoring the situation. The EU has imposed sanctions. But does the U.S. need to do more? Does the global community need to do more? I'm not sure if the Biden administration yet grasps the opportunity um, that these protests in some ways present. I understand um, you, you don't want to do any, any harm or endanger the lives of, of, of protesters, but uh, the reality is that if you did have a different government in Iran, a representative government which follows the national interests of Iran rather than uh, an anti-American revolutionary ideology, it would be a geopolitical game changer for the United States, whether it's in Venezuela, Ukraine, North Korea, throughout the Middle East, all of the places in which Iran is aligned against the United States. So I, I do think we could be thinking more creatively and intelligently about how to support the cause of change in Iran. Well, what do you think needs to happen in order for the president, for his administration, to come to that conclusion? Well, my sense is that, uh, you know, uh, they're dealing with so many different global crises at the moment. Ukraine, uh, potential tactical use of nuclear weapons by Vladimir Putin, China, Taiwan. Um, I, I do think that up until now, for the last 16, 17 months, the sole focus of their Iran strategy has been to try to revive the nuclear deal. And it's now time to broaden that strategy and maybe even broaden the team of folks that are working on the country. Well, um, we so appreciate your insights as we report on this ongoing situation in Iran. Thank you so much, Kareem Sajapur. We really appreciate it.
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.